this video, I'm going to be going over editing notes on the machine hardware. So of course, this is going to be super important for the machine plus users, because this is the only way to edit notes when you're not working with the computer. But it's also going to be important for those Mark III users who just want to get rid of the monitor for a while, turn off your computer, just work with the machine, because this is possible. You can totally do this. And it works the exact same way as the Machine Plus. And then the other thing is that I'm going to be showing you some tips that are sometimes even faster than working with the keyboard and mouse anyways. So very important stuff here. And a few things just to get out of the way. I'm not getting paid to make this video, but Native Instruments does send me the hardware for free. And I do have affiliate links in the description. So those kind of help me out. I'm also going to be showing off Community Drive 2021, which is the, the latest expansion just came out today. And this is a donation expansion. And so Native Instruments last year raised a ton of money for their community drive, and they're doing the same thing. This year, it's got a really great cause. Click through the link and check that out and go pick that up for a donation if you can. And then I'm also going to be using some patches by J3PO, one of my favorite and most influential YouTube artists out there right now. I'm telling you, this guy is incredible. And he's made some beautiful patches for Arturia's virtual Oberheim. So I'll put the link for that in the description as well. I also have a way for you to help me out if you want. I've set up a paypal.me account. So if you want to give me a little financial tip for the videos that I do here, helping me out would go a long ways. And it would mean that I could start doing more and more of these kind of videos because they take a long time to produce. Let me tell you. So let's get right into the video. I'll be the first to say that editing notes on machine can be tedious. And yes, it's easier to just go and use the computer and the mouse. But if you train yourself to get past some of those hurdles and start using the hardware a little bit more, you're going to find that this magical thing starts happening with this ecosystem and your fingers start doing these things on this device that you can't quite accomplish as fast with the keyboard and mouse. So. Okay, so this first one here is my community drive idea. And I've got a community drive kit here and a couple of community drive sounds that are making all of the music here. So some really cool patches in there. I'm using the, the Clapwise Air kit. I'm using a, a little shaker. I'm using this salty bass and Zola Jesus Buckshot. That's my little synth thing. And then the MTM major patch. So first things first, when you are editing notes on the machine, you're going to be going to this events page. So click the events page to get there and see your notes. And this is also where you're going to be getting into event select mode by pressing the select button. If your events mode isn't locking, then that means you need to hold events down and press this top left button right here. So if I do that, that gives you the ability to either have it be an on only when you're pressing it button or it allows you to lock it. So we're going to lock that in place. And now we are in events mode. So when you are in keyboard mode, your event screen is going to show you over on the left hand side, it's going to show you all the notes for the pattern that you're in. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see a zoomed in version of your display. So I can zoom in and out on the whole thing right here, or I can zoom in. And it, something that's really important to get out of the way right, right off the bat is this little project cursor thing. So right now, if I move my 4D encoder, as long as none of these buttons are pressed, I'm going to be selecting notes when I'm in the events mode. If I hold shift, I'm going to move my project cursor around. This is your playhead. So as you can see right now, it's jumping around by whole bars, which is not going to be very useful because what I might want to do is take a note like this one right here and copy and paste it somewhere else. That's going to be the easiest way to, to add a new note when you're editing in the events mode. So one thing you need to do right off the bat is go over to this follow grid. You're going to hold shift so we can get to the grid. We need to change the arrange setting. So this arrange setting right now is set to one bar. So that means as I'm moving around on my events here, this is going to move me by a bar, which isn't going to be helpful to me. So what I want to do is make sure I'm on a range and I'm going to set that to a 16th note just by these pads right here. And then I just go back to events. And now watch what happens when I press shift and move my 4D encoder. It allows me to move around in 16th notes. You're also going to notice on that grid menu while we're there, you're going to see something over on this step menu that says nudge is step divided by two. 
So whatever your step value is, later on if we use these nudge keys, those are going to move by half of whatever your setting is. So it's actually going to allow me to nudge things over by a 30 second note, which is pretty cool. And you can change that right here if you want, but I like having it set to a little bit finer resolution. We'll go back to the events, and now we can see these notes that we've got played in here. So very simply, all you have to do is move your 40 encoder, as long as none of these buttons are pressed right here, you are going to be moving your note around this little event selection area. Without this select button down, I can go to any note. As soon as it's selected, I can push up with the 4D encoder to move it up or down by semitones. I can take a note like this one right here. I can shift and quantize that one so it's perfectly on the beat. I can take that note and I can adjust the length of it right here, I can adjust the velocity. So here we've got velocity. And then I can also adjust the pitch right here. And then I can also adjust the start of the note. What if we wanted another note to happen right here? So I could go over to this note right here. I could take the length. I'm going to move it to, uh, I'm gonna, first I'm going to quantize it. I'm going to adjust the length so that it goes just before that note. And you know what you can do also is I can hold down shift and I can play with the length and now I can get really precise control. I can do that with pretty much any of these controls. And it's just going to give you more, more precision. I can adjust the start very carefully. I can move things slightly in and out of time if you wanted something to be not perfectly quantized. And then what I can do is I can go shift and I can go copy. And then now with my playhead, because I've got the resolution set to 16th note, I can put this wherever I want shift and then paste that note in and now I can shift that note up. Let's try it right there. So now I've just created a note because there really isn't a way for you to draw notes in. If you want to select a bunch of notes and then do something to all of them at the same time, that's totally possible as well. We start with this first note. I'm going to press the select button. You can see we're starting at, at right at the beginning and I'm going to go, I want you to select all the notes up to bar three. So something like that. And then right now we can still see that only the notes A sharp two are being selected. Raise this up and then lower this down so that we get all of those notes. So it's kind of defining parameters for you as if maybe you just wanted to select one note or something like that. And actually there is another way I can go none if I don't want to select any of them. I can just click this note right here if I want to select all of those notes. I can click this one right here if I want to select all of those notes and so on and so forth. It doesn't allow me to select, you know, every other one or something like that, but I've got a trick for that coming up. So we make our selection right here. I can say everything up to, let's say, bar three. And here, all I want to do is go shift up an octave. So now I've just moved those notes up an entire octave. I'm going to go shift, take them back down an octave. I can also go and nudge these. So if I press shift and nudge, I am moving them over by half of a 16th note because that's what my step is set to on the grid. Remember that one? So if you go to step, the, uh, the nudge here is set to half of whatever the step value is. I could also erase notes here. So I can clear them just by pressing shift clear. Once you have your notes selected, I can turn event select mode off so I can see position, pitch, velocity, and length. And because I've got a bunch of notes selected, I can move them all at the same time. So I can move them over. I can adjust the pitch right here. I can adjust the velocity of all of them. And this is an interesting one. When you are adjusting the velocity of multiple pitches, it's going to move them in relation to each other until it gets to the very top and then eventually they're going to both meet or at the bottom. So that's how the velocity works when you have multiple pitches selected. So I could go to velocity here and just crank them all up to 127. And now if we were to look at each individual note, we see that they are all set to 127. So that'd be a really easy way for you to say, take something that you played in on the, the pads, you go to select all, and then get out of the select mode and just crank up the velocity so that all of them now are at 127. Or you could say set them all to, you know, 93 or something like that. So now with none of them selected, as you see right here, we're all at 93. And then of course we can also adjust the length of these notes too. So let's go look at something with in pad mode for a second. So we've got 
Things are a little bit different in pad mode, because remember with pad mode, you're working with 16 different pads or 16 different sounds. And so your 4D encoder is going to jump between the different sounds. So you can see as I move around, I can get to those different slots really quickly, or I can use the 4D encoder. So what I can do in pad mode here is I can go shift select, and then now I can see all of the pads that are being used in this little idea. If I press this, the select button, that does the exact same thing. So this shift select will give you kind of quick access to select sounds. And you could even do that when you're not in the select menu. So I can select a bunch of these different sounds and those will now be selected in your pattern, even though you can't see it. So that's one way for you to select sounds. Of course, we can use the event select mode just by clicking right here. It's gonna look a little bit different than the keyboard event select. Let's take it off the select mode for a second. When you're in events mode for anything on, on pad mode, the way your 4D encoder works is you turn this thing to the, to the right or left, and it's gonna select the events for whatever sound you are on. So if I'm on this one right here, there's only one event. As soon as I turn the 4D encoder, it gets selected. Now watch what happens if I push down on this it doesn't move the event down, which I kind of wish it did. It would be kind of nice if it did, but right now this up or down, all it does is select the different sound. So here we can see this event is selected. For me to get my focus, because my follow button is on, for me to get my focus on this screen over to this spot really quickly, all I have to do is hold shift and crank over to the right. Now we've got the focus on this little area. And let's say I want to take this note right here and I want to take it off of slot four and put it on slot seven. Go shift, copy, clear, and then I'm gonna go down to pad seven and shift paste. And then let's say I wanted to select this one and put another one right here. I go down with the 4D encoder and I turn that until that gets selected. And now I go shift copy, and then I make sure that my playhead is right at that spot where I want it and I just go shift paste. So that's how you can very quickly generate information as well. So painting in notes, I guess, if you want, because we don't have a paint tool. So also don't forget really easy ways for you to select a bunch of things at the same time. So let's say I didn't like this, this kick drum on pad nine. All I have to do is go to select, and then I'm just gonna go pad nine, select all of pad nine. I'm gonna go copy, clear, and then make sure my playhead is at the very beginning. And then I'm gonna get out of select mode, click on pad five, and then go shift, paste. And now the kick drum has been copied to somewhere completely different. All right, so let's undo that. So it's really easy for you to copy information, say on an entire pad, move it somewhere else. You could also, you know, maybe if you wanted to beef up this snare drum, I could go select, I'm gonna go none, and then I'm gonna click on pad 10. That's where my little snarey kind of hit is. And I'm just gonna go shift copy, and then I'm gonna get my playhead exactly at that same first hit. And then we're going to get out of select mode. And we're gonna copy that onto pad seven. So right now I'm on pad seven and I just go shift paste. And now I've got snare drums happening along with that other hit. So let's undo that. So just to be clear, when you are holding, when you press select, what are you looking at here? All you're looking at is the pads that are actually being used in this pattern. So the rest of these grayed out pads aren't being used. That's why you're not seeing them. And again, this is just a really easy way for you to select all of those sounds for any of these pads. And now for a couple of totally essential 4D encoder tips when you're editing notes is if you hold the 4D encoder and you have a note selected like we do right here, if I push down on the 4D encoder and turn to the right or, le or left, I am going to be changing the length of the note. This is extremely useful. Let me just get rid of this note just so you can really see what's going on here. Again, I push down the 4D encoder, change the length. Also with a note selected, watch what happens if I push the 4D encoder to the right, moves it over by the nudge grid. So it's the same thing as using this nudge command right here, but you can just do it right from the 4D encoder. So another thing I should talk about right now before I get into step mode is erasing notes. Erasing notes sounds like it should be pretty straightforward, but there's some interesting ways that you can erase notes. One, of course, is just to, you know, go through and press clear. So do something like this. 
if I wanted to select every other one of those. Here's another really interesting one. If I go to event select mode, and this has to be under select mode, I go to select mode. If I go erase and click any one of these pads, it's going to just erase all of them. Here's another weird one. If I am playing my song, I can go through, as long as select mode is off, I can press play and hold a pad and hold down, or hold down erase and hold down the pad I want to erase and watch what happens. So I just erased a whole bunch of things while the song was playing. I don't know, maybe that's something you might want to do if you were, if you were working in a live scenario. That might be a super handy thing to, to put down a whole bunch of hi-hats or whatever and then selectively get rid of stuff as the song is playing. You can also do this for the whole group. Press play and watch what happens when I hold erase and press down uh, group A. Gets rid of everything. I don't know, somebody out there is, is super excited about that little thing I showed you. I can't imagine myself using that, but hey, you're welcome, whoever you are. And here's another one using the 4D encoder. As long as you have no notes selected, watch what happens when I press Shift Erase and turn the 4D encoder. It's just going to erase all of those notes during that selection that I pass it through. And here's another weird one. If I hold, if I want to do this on multiple sounds, I need to select multiple pads or sounds. So I'm going to go over to pad mode here. I'm going to hit select and then I'm going to go multi and I'm going to select all the pads that I want to erase. And then now go back to events mode. Watch what happens when I hold shift and erase. It's going to erase any of those pads that I had selected, but nothing else. I'm going to show you a few more little tips, but on this one I'm going to be using Crate Cuts and a bunch of patches from the J3PO library that he just released. So we've got the bass, the pad, the lead, and another lead sound in here, all from that library. that's for sure. Okay, first off, let me just mute uh, the solo line. And let's go over to a new group. And what I want to do is just put a little shaker in. So I'm going to go over to one shots, and I'm going to go to community drive, and I'm going to go to percussion, and then we'll go to shaker. There we go. Okay, so if I want to enter notes in other than just playing, and that's what kind of I've been assuming this whole time that you understand how to do that kind of stuff. But Whatever if I want to use step mode, because that's another way to enter notes and to manipulate notes on machine plus when you uh, don't have a keyboard or don't have a monitor. So step mode is quite useful. And so we'll look at a few things that are specific to step mode and entering and deleting notes. So if I go over to step mode, I can drop in some shaker. And as long as fixed velocity is on and it's set to whatever it is right here, all my notes come in at a velocity of 100. So if I don't want that, I can turn off fixed velocity and watch what happens now if I hit hard, soft, hard, soft. I get different velocities based on how hard I actually enter the notes in. So you could do something like all of these ones hard, all of these ones soft. So now you've got this. Pretty cool. So it's a very quick way to enter multiple velocities in. The other thing you could do is, is set it to fixed velocity for the first ones and do all of those at full velocity. And then set your fixed velocity way down and enter the next ones in at a softer velocity. There is something called quick edit, which I was kind of fumbling through with the manual. And the way that works is if you just click the pad, it either enters a note or deletes it. And if you hold the pad down, it will allow you to go access the plugin menu for that sound. So you can go in and do some really quick stuff like change the tuning of just that one hit. This does some other things as well. If I hold down this pad right here and I go over to this button right here, this is where the quick edit stuff is. And I checked on the forums and turns out there's no way for you to actually see this while you are in step mode, which I wish you could. So hopefully they change that in the future. But what you can do right here is I hold it down 
I go over to where it says velocity for the 4D encoder and I start turning this down. And now you can see step velocity right there. It's quite small, but I could get this to like say 65 or whatever. And now you can see that that's just adjusted to 65. I can also go in and adjust the position and the tune. So I can go raise the pitch of this note if it was say um, a melodic thing, which is which would be more useful when you're entering notes in. But in this case, Mostly for me, it's like, well, I can go and adjust the velocity really quickly of one particular step just by adjusting that, those parameters. But I do still think this view right here is the easiest way to adjust your velocity. So the other thing you can do if you just want to adjust, say, the velocity of one hit, let's say that third hit right there, if I hold this down and let it go, look at that, it's selected. So now I can go in and change the velocity of that pitch. And let's say I want to adjust the velocity of this one, just hold it down. Now it's selected and I can crank that one up. So that is a really quick way for you to select single pitches. And here's the kicker. It will allow you to select multiple pitches. So watch this. I'm going to set my fixed velocity to 127. I'm going to enter in all of these notes right here. Now watch what happens if I hold down all four of these pads and keep them held down just for a moment and then release them. All four of those are selected. So this quick edit mode will actually work for these pitches as well. So I hold down, I make sure I'm on velocity right here and we're gonna crank this down to 53. And now we can see all of those pitches got moved down. So multiple ways for you to select not necessarily sequential notes on machine with the hardware using the step mode. And don't forget that step mode does work on stuff that you've even played in. So if I go over to this right here and click on step mode, we're gonna see. So I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna move my playhead over just a little bit. And we're just gonna press play and find out where those hits are. So this kick right here, I want to adjust the volume of this kick a little bit more. So while I'm in step mode, hold that one down and go over to velocity and we're just going to turn it down a little bit. There we go. Now we've got it even lower. I can, I can get it even lower and now it's much lower. Maybe that's a little extreme. And then the other thing you can do if you want to see once you've selected a note, like say this, one right here, make sure that fixed velocity is off. If fixed velocity is not off, it won't let you sort of adjust these in real time. But now I can go, now I can select this one and I can adjust the velocity of that. I can select this one, adjust the velocity of that and so on and so forth. So really quick access to these, to the velocities of these individual notes. So let's just go and make a quick pattern in step mode just to kind of go through this. So I'm gonna go over to pattern, make a new pattern. And all you have to do to select the, the kick drum or the snare drum, whatever that you want, is just hold down the select, make sure you're on the kick. And so now I'm gonna be entering in kick drum. I'll put a kick there, just like that. And then next thing we're gonna do is go to the snare. So I'm gonna go select. Make sure multi is off and select the snare. And then now I can enter in my snare on two and four. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll select our hi-hat, which is gonna be right here. And let's put those in at fixed velocity of 121. And maybe we'll make them a little bit louder. And then I'm gonna go over to these ones and we're gonna make them a lot softer. So we'll go down to like 70. I wanna select all four of those. And then I'm gonna to go to velocity. I'm gonna raise them up a little bit. So maybe like 90. And then this one I want to be an open hi-hat. So I'm gonna select over on the open hi-hat, go back to step and I'm just gonna put open hi-hat right there. And we'll change that velocity to 127. Let's remember that step edit and events, they're kind of connected in the sense that 
you know, they're showing, they're selecting notes in a similar way, you're adjusting them in a similar way. Let's go over to the bass. And let's say I want this note right here to be down one little notch. Watch what happens when I go over to step mode. You're gonna see that note. I'm gonna click on that note, hold it down, it's selected, and I'm just gonna move it with the 4D encoder so it goes down two notches. And the next note I want to be back to the root note, so I'm just gonna select it this way and move it down. And then let's say I want uh, an octave higher note right there. I'm just gonna cycle through till I get a note selected. And I'm just gonna go Shift, Copy, and then I'm gonna paste it right where I want it, right there, paste, and then we're just gonna move that up an octave. And then I'm, here's another handy tip. With this 4D encoder, Shift, Rewind. Look at that, oh. I was watching a Blesbeats video and he said that on the old studio they used to be arrow keys, which would go, you know, move the, the playhead back just a little bit. Man, I wish we had that. Shift and then 4D encoder. I use that all the time when I'm editing. So make sure you go to your grid setting, turn that arrange to like a 16th note, and now you're gonna be able to fly around and start at very specific spots. You're starting to get the idea of how fast it is to go through and edit notes, even though you're, you, you don't have a touch screen. Wouldn't it be nice for a touch screen? But honestly, a touch screen for this kind of stuff, my fingers are just much too fat. But anyways, selecting notes in chords, same sort of thing. You're gonna rip through the, the notes just like this, which seems like, oh, that's kind of tedious, but you can, get, you can get to the spot that you need to really quickly. And also don't forget to shift focus of that screen. Just move your playhead around by shift and moving around. And make sure that follow button is on. So it's really not that hard to, to get through. Select notes, move them around. What about a chord? What about if I want to take, say, this chord right here? And let's, what about this little one right here? And move it up an octave. Well, right now I go to select and I go start at, we're gonna go almost up to bar three, but not quite. And then we're gonna go move the start time over and then I'm gonna move my low pitch down and my high pitch down. And then now I go shift up the octave. So that's a lot of note editing information. Hopefully you wrote some of that down. And like I said, just come back, watch it again. You'll pick it up, start using some of these techniques and you'll start flying around on your Machine Plus without a screen or you'll be on your Machine Mark III and you will be ripping around without the monitor. So set yourself free from that monitor and edit with the tools on the machine. So if you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell. And thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.